Good morning, Kilbourne. This is your community news for Friday, December 5th, 2014. I'm Monica Thomas. And I'm Audrey Wachtel. Every holiday season, Kilburn has the opportunity to give back to our community. Mr. Miller is retiring this year, so Katie tomorrow talked to him about his marketing secrets and raising money for the Adopt-A-Child campaign. The holiday season is all about giving, and here at Kilburn, we have a great opportunity through Adopt-A-Child to help make a young child's Christmas a little brighter. As if the joy of giving isn't enough motivation to bring in money, I asked Mr. Miller about some of his fundraising secrets in the past that has made his class so successful. What suggestions do you have for other teachers in raising money? Well, first of all, it helps when you look like Santa. So a lot of them have a disadvantage because they don't have a beard. Uh, but uh, in, in previous years, when I've had a third period class, we put together a whole little marketing strategy for how we are going to raise money. So we might have, for example, a loose change day. And that's the day everybody empties out their pockets and their purses and their wallets with loose change. We have silent money day, and that is only bills can be contributed. Another time, <laughs> last year we, we did several things last year that were new. We had a look for change in sofas day. We did something brand new. We did a Christmas caroling. This was amazing. We, there were, uh, it was, I had a class of 13 girls last year in uh, uh, an AP Lit class. So we went Christmas caroling in one of their neighborhoods. But we did several things to make sure that they were ready for us. First of all, we borrowed the younger brother of one of the, of the students. And we also prepared a slip of paper that explained what, why we were caroling and what we would do with the money for adopt a child. So we would go, not, we'd have the, the boy, the eight, a 10 year old boy I think he was, he would knock on the door, we would start singing, when the people came to the door, the little boy would give them the slip of paper. Now, it's hard if somebody is singing Christmas carols to you, it's hard when a little boy gives you a slip of paper saying, would you like to contribute? We, in one hour, we collected $190 for Adopt a Child. The deadline is Wednesday, December 10th, so keep bringing in money. Katie DeMauro, WKHS News. As one of the NHL's newest teams, the Columbus Blue Jackets are beginning to make a big impact on the league in the greater Columbus area. Zach Walton visited Nationwide Arena to give us new information on the season to come. The Columbus Blue Jackets were founded in 2000 and have made a strong impact in the past few years. They made their first playoff appearance in 2009 and had their first playoff win in 2014. So far this season has not been ideal, but the Jackets are getting back on track as many of their injured players are returning to action. I spoke with former Jacket and current Fox Sports Ohio color analyst Jody Shelley about the organization and the season to come. So what significant changes have you seen take place in the club since you left the team in 2008? Wow, wow, that's, it's been a lot. It's, uh, when I was here, there was a different coach, and almost every player, except for Jared Bull, uh, is different. He's the only guy I play with on that team. So um, a lot of encouraging things, though. New general manager, new, new president, and um, I like the attitude here with the Columbus Blue Jackets. It's, uh, it's a work-first work uh, mentality. And uh, it's something that um, right now they're not on track with that, but uh, they got a lot of guys injured, so hopefully they'll get back on track. What makes the Columbus Blue Jackets different from any other team in the NHL? Well, that's a really good question, Zach. Um, what makes them different? They are a team that knows their identity. Um, there's a lot of teams now who are almost at the 20-game point. Some teams have actually hit the 20-game point who don't know what they are. They don't know if they're a skilled team that wins with effort or an effort team that wins with a little skill. The Blue Jackets know what they are. They have an identity, and it's a relentless identity. Um, it's, it's something that they're proud of and that the teams that leave the building here um, after a game, they know they've been in a battle with the Columbus Blue Jackets, and that's what they're like. They're like a dog that just keeps on coming, a dog on a bone. And, uh, um, that's what makes them different, is that they have a, a strong identity, and uh, when they play to it, they're very hard to beat. The Jackets' rough start has been in part due to the large number of injuries that have plagued the team with what is known as the injury bug. 
but with such a young team, they are still pushing to have the best season that they can. Who do you think will have the biggest impact on the team this year? Well, Sergei Bobrovsky, the goalie, he's uh, already been injured, and when he was out, uh, it was tough times for the Blue Jackets. Uh, he's, when you have a number one goalie like him, he's one of the top five goalies in the National Hockey League. It changes the way you play. It really settles down your players. He can make the big save if you make a mistake. Uh, so he's definitely the impact player on this team. The Blue Jackets and Nationwide Arena also have a large intent on incorporating the youth of Columbus within the organization. They use a program known as Student Rush to help them out. Student Rush gives students an opportunity to get to see the Blue Jackets in action, selling $15 tickets to anyone with a valid student ID one hour prior to every home game. That's a great program, and I see the kids lined up there every single game that it's available. Um, I think the, door, the, the tickets go on sale at 5 or 6 in the afternoon. I'm not for sure on the details, but $10 tickets, you get to come in and watch a National Hockey League team play on any, any given night. It's a pretty special way to acknowledge that this is a college town. One large feature of every hockey season is the All-Star Weekend, which this year will be hosted here in Columbus on January 24th and 25th. The hockey world is a small world, and um, to be the center of the hockey universe for four days is pretty incredible for the Columbus area and the Columbus Blue Jackets organization. You're going to have the top players in the world and their friends and family in the building. The National Hockey League will be here in all facets of their, their business, and um, this is a, a city that's very proud to host they're, they've hosted many, many events, great events on a world-class level. And uh, it seems like we're ready to put on a show here in, in Columbus. So it'll be fun, it'll be exciting, and, and it'll be uh, something that I think that the people of Columbus will be proud to see that uh, they're a part of a community that hosts such an event. Do you think the uh, Jackets will make the playoffs this season? Yes. So come on out and support your jackets as they make their way to the coveted Stanley Cup. Remember, all you need is $15 and your student ID. You can turn a boring night of TV into a fun night of hockey and festivities. Zach Walton, WKHS News. Have you ever wondered where the money for parking passes go? Hannah Byer and Abby Johnson tell us more. Have you ever wondered where the money from parking passes goes, or why we even have them in the first place? Abby Johnson and I went to the east parking lot and noticed there are quite a few cars without parking passes. According to our school treasurer, Julie Hammond, the money goes to the district fund and is used to maintain the parking lots here at school. Who checks for students parking in the right parking lot? Mr. Sauter and I will go out and we'll look, we'll check the parking lot. Um, Sometimes we have these vehicle violation tickets that we'll put, and they're more of just a reminder for students to, to get the proper parking passes. Um, we'll go out, you know, we'll, we'll walk through the parking lot and make sure that everyone's parking in the correct spots and, um, and that everyone has a pass. Has anyone gotten in trouble for not having a parking pass this year? Yes, um, not so much trouble, but um, we remind students to get their passes and, and help them through that process if they don't have one. Our deans are extremely busy, and as you can see, they are not able to catch everyone. So it is important to follow the rules and have a parking pass so that our parking lot will continue to be well maintained. Hannah Byer, WKHS News. Good luck to all winter sports who compete this weekend. Thank you for watching and have a great weekend, Kilbourne.